In interphase 1, DNA starts as one strand and then replicates into two. In this cell, the 2N number is 46, while the N number is 23. In interphase 1, DNA lineup is pairs of homologous chromosomes shown in blue and green pieces of paper. They perform a process called crossing over in which they exchange genetic information and become what's known as a tetrad. With independent assortment, the tetrad that has just been formed can line up many different ways, which would give many different genes to its four daughter cells, which will be created at the end of meiosis II. In metaphase, the pairs of homologous chromosomes now line up in the center of the cell on the metaphase plate. In anaphase 1, after they have lined up in the middle, the chromosomes are now pulled to separate parts of the cell. In telophase 1, the nuclear envelope reforms between the pairs of homologous chromosomes that were pulled apart in anaphase, creating two new cells. These new cells that were created are haploid, or 2N. Meiosis 2 usually occurs in two cells at the same time, but here we'll, we will just show one. In prophase 2, no DNA replication occurs. However, the replicated centrosomes from prophase 1 separate and move to opposite sides of their groups. In metaphase 2, somewhat like metaphase 1, sister chromatids line up in the middle of the cells. Here in anaphase 2, the sister chromatids are now pulled apart by spindle fibers to opposite ends of the cell. In telophase 2, the nuclear envelope reforms in the two cells and ends up creating four. Each of these four new daughter cells has a chromosome number of N. Through meiosis, males create four viable sperm. However, females only create one viable egg. The others they create are polar and are destroyed. Fertilization allows for variation because of the fact when egg and sperm are joined, each sperm and egg can, can contain a different allele from each parent. This is due to the law of independent assortment and the law of segregation.